after a long wait, it has finally happened. Steve Cohen is officially the owner of the New York Mets. He got the approval by the owners. He got approval by New York City. So he has gotten past all the obstacles. It was a very tough journey for Cohen to actually get this team as much as he wants to do it because... First of all, negotiating with the Wilpons, which he tried in December of 2019, was very, very difficult. They couldn't come to an agreement, so Cohen had to try again to get the team, and he had to fight off all this craziness that A-Rod and J-Lo gave him down to the bitter, bitter end, but Cohen came out on top. Money prevails, and now the Mets have a lot of money to spend, and you have to be very, very excited if you are a New York Mets fan. In this video, I'm going to talk about Steve Cohen taking over as a member of the New York Mets, what it means to the team, and what are some things the Mets can now do going forward now that they have a new owner. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, what do you think about Steve Cohen taking over the Mets? How excited are you if you're a Mets fan? And what other players do you think the Mets could target in free agency? Because we're starting to see some players open up on the waiver wire. Guys like Brad Hand, Charlie Morton, the Yankees declined a lot of their players. So maybe the Mets could consider some of those guys as well. And always make sure to hit that subscribe button if you had it. Makes my day. It would make the day even better after Steve Cohen taking over. It just is a big time deal for the Mets because... One of the Mets' biggest problems is that they have been cheap. And because of that, they haven't gotten the players that they really should have. Every time when the Mets don't meet expectations and they don't reach the playoffs, now it's the offseason. This is where you have a great opportunity to improve and become a better team. And instead of getting you know big-time star players or guys that are young that have a lot of upside, the Mets go for veteran discounts. They get Todd Frazier. They get Jay Bruce. They get Jed Lowry. You, know, you can go down the line of all these different veterans that the Mets always try to bring in. Guys who, as I always say, are past All-Stars, not future All-Stars. And the Mets do that time and time again. And because of that, it has continually hurt them. You know, there have been some obvious no-brainer moves that the Mets could make to make their team significantly better, and they don't do it. They let good players, like even a Zach Wheeler, walk away because they don't want to pay the money to keep these players. So this was something that was happening time and time again. Also, the Mets made the wrong hire at general manager with Brody Van Wagenen. He did not do a good job as GM of the Mets. They couldn't get to the playoffs, made a lot of questionable moves, destroyed their farm system in the process. They lost so many guys in all the different trades that the Mets made under Brody Van Wagenen's tenure, and that's definitely going to be something to keep in mind going forward. I wonder what is going to be the Mets' new philosophy and how they acquire new players because the very important thing that needs to happen now is that we know that Sandy Alderson is going to be under Cohen and he's going to kind of oversee everything. It still looks like there are going to be another person or two that are going to run the Mets. So I'm very curious to see who those choices are going to be. And one of the good things that I like about Steve Cohen that he has talked about is upgrading the analytics department. That is a very important part of what the Mets need to do because since the Mets were cheap, they didn't have a good analytics department. They didn't have this, you know, high tech software that a lot of teams in baseball are using right now. While I might not be the biggest analyst guy, I still, you know, go with gut. I still go with the eye test, kind of like Blake Snell the other night for the World Series. The old school philosophy is that you leave Blake Snell out there to keep pitching, but new school is third time around the lineup, you have to take him out. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to decide what kind of decision the Mets are going to make. Will there be a new manager? I think there's going to be a ton of question marks that the Mets have to answer. And one of the really interesting things that has happened within the past couple of days are all these teams declining options on pretty nice players. Somebody like Brad Hand, who went on waivers, who the Mets, they probably should have put a claim on because he has been a pretty good pitcher for most of his career, especially the last couple of years. Had that really bad game against the Yankees in the playoffs, no doubt about it. But for the most part, he's a guy that could be an all-star reliever. And the Mets desperately need bullpen help, and they really need pitching. That's what I want the Mets' main focus to be this year is pitching. Starting pitching and relief pitching because they need a lot of it. Not just one or two guys. They need a ton of different arms. One of the big guys that I really am circling now is Charlie Morton, who his option also did not get picked up by the Tampa Bay Rays. We know the Rays like to keep their payroll really low. And what you're seeing from a lot of people is that they believe because of COVID, the economy is going to be very different. Baseball lost a lot of money this year without having fans in attendance, having a shortened season, not as many games to televise. So because of that, a lot of these teams are not going to keep their free agents. They're going to let them go and try to cut off some salary, try to recoup some money back that they lost during the course of the season. So since Steve Cohen will step in as the richest owner in baseball by a significant margin, he could acquire these guys since there is no salary cap. So if he wants to put in an offer for Charlie Morton, put in an offer for Brad Hand, 
all the different players that could come out within the next couple of days. Let's wait and see. But the Mets now have the opportunity to pretty much do whatever they want, especially in free agency. And that is something that you are not used to saying. And it's just a great thing to feel and to say because we know that there have been some big time free agents out there lately, whether it was Bryce Harper, whether it was Manny Machado. And Mets fans clamored for the team to sign at least one of those guys. And they were never even close to doing it. And you just knew that, all right, you know what, the Mets aren't going to consider these guys, so it's not even worth thinking about them, it's not even worth worrying about them. But now, you feel like the Mets could be a big-time bidder. They could finally act like a true New York team. The main thing that I hope for with Steve Cohen taking over as a new owner of the New York Mets is it's going to stop the embarrassment, where it's just like, oh, that's so Mets. Oh, that's a Mets thing. And I say it all the time because they seem to have been very unlucky, especially within the 2000s. They've just had a lot of things not really go their way. The team in 2006, I thought that team could have won the World Series. The team in 2015, I thought they could have won the World Series. And neither time did it happen. You know, some unfortunate things happened, whether it was errors in the field, whether it was mismanaging of Matt Harvey, whether it was Jerry Familia giving a big home run, whether it was Jose Reyes popping up the ninth thing, whether it was Aaron Heilman giving up a home run to Yanni Molina, or Adam Wainwright throwing an amazing curveball against Carlos Beltran. It just seemed that time and time again, a lot of unfortunate things happened for the Mets injuries you know all the time to big time players look at what happened with David Wright look at what happened with Cespedes Johan Santana anytime the Mets give a lot of money to someone they get hurt they're not the same player and you just hope that all this bad luck all this negativity that's surrounding the Mets under the Wilpon leadership will now go away with new ownership new faces new general manager new front office a lot of new players that's what you hope and it'll just lead for just a total difference in the Mets and that Instead of being a team that every year they have a losing record, they fail to meet expectations. We could talk about a team that's actually winning games in the playoffs consistently, not just one time every 10 years. That is my hope. That really is my prayer. If you guys want, I'm thinking of doing it anyway, but kind of making some more like small videos, like things Mets could target, maybe position by position, what pitchers are out there, catchers are out there. Because, I mean, you look at the way things are going right now, all these players all of a sudden becoming free agents. The Yankees decline a bunch of options on their guys. Maybe the Mets could take a look at some if they could get a, a cheap deal on one of those guys. Maybe one of their pitchers, maybe somebody like a Paxton or even a Hat. And looking at just the way baseball has gone lately, especially the past two World Series, you just see the importance of pitching, especially starting pitching. You look at the way Julio Urias closed out the National League Championship Series and the World Series for the Dodgers as a starting pitcher. And the Nationals did the same thing the year before with Strasburg and Corbin and Scherzer. Really good starting pitching. And the Mets, they don't really have that anymore because they have a lot of question marks to answer in the rotation right now because we know Jacob DeGrom. Okay, so we have that. That's one arm. After that, it's really a big question mark because Noah Syndergaard, we have no idea how he's going to be coming back from his injury. And I'm not that high on Syndergaard to begin with. I do believe he is very inconsistent because Syndergaard could give you a really nice outing, only give up a run or two. Then the next outing, three runs to four runs. It's just very, very inconsistent. He only goes five innings. And that's a problem for the Mets because of the even bigger problem, which is their bullpen. You cannot consistently rely on the Mets bullpen to give you more than you know three innings or two innings. If they have to start in the sixth inning and you have to get four innings out of them, that's really, really duff, difficult to do. And it's not necessarily ideal. Too many times last season, the Mets would only get an inning or two out of their starting pitchers. So you were asking so much out of the bullpen. With the short schedule, the Mets didn't really have any off days. So they were just using arm after arm. These guys were tired or worn down, were ineffective. And it just led to so many disappointing losses for the Mets this year. And Porcello's a free agent. Michael Waka is a free agent. Marcus Stroman is a free agent. So those are three parts in the rotation that you also have to account for. David Pierce, I definitely think he could step in and be one of the Mets starting pitchers. That's two guys you have so far. Matt, I don't trust. I still think you need to upgrade there. You can't have him as like your number three or four pitcher. So you're still going to need multiple starting pitchers. And then after that, more starting pitchers. Because if someone were to get hurt again, like Noah Syndergaard did, like Marcus Stroman did, and even just the small IL stints, which David Peterson had, Michael Waka had, you know, these guys don't go out for like a week or two. You need guys to fill in. It can't be Ariel Gerardo. It cannot be Corey Oswald, Chris Flexen, Walker Lockett, all the guys I've talked about in the past. It needs to be reliable major league pitchers. That's why if you can get somebody like a Jay Hat pretty cheap, I think you have to try because you're just going to need a lot of arms. And if you could do that, 
it gives you the ability to move Seth Lugo to the bullpen. And that will make your bullpen stronger, which you also desperately need. So I want the Mets to really focus on pitching, get a good catcher, and see if you can make any other little moves on offense. Whether it is in center field, that's where you really want to focus on. But there isn't too, too much out there outside of George Springer. And even that's a little risky. You know, I've talked about that a little bit. Shortstop, that's another position I would like to address. The trade for Francisco Lindor is something I'd be willing to consider because I, I talked about this on the Met Universe. If you guys aren't following on Instagram, make sure to check that out. But I talked about how the Mets have a bit of a logjam on the infield right now. Guys like Rosario and Jimenez and McNeil and J.D. Davis and Alonzo and Dom Smith and Cano. With no DH next year, that's going to be a lot of infielders that are on the bench. So you might have to move some of these guys around. If you have to trade J.D. Davis, as much as that pains me to say, you have to trade Rosario and maybe another piece to acquire a Francisco Lindor or maybe even a Nolan Arenado, I think you have to make that move because the Mets have to show that they are not playing around, that they are a real team to be threatened with now and a real team to be considered. No more laughing stock, become a winning team. Until the next one, be safe, be smart, be healthy, and have a good one.